about a story. A story about money, moida, generations, and the American dream. That's about as much of that accent that I can do. What up, guys? Roscan here. I took a week off. Back with a brand new review. We're not doing Halloween things anymore. Now it's just the classics. This week, it was... The Godfather is the multi-generational tale of the Corleone crime family, chronicling the last years of Don Vito and the rise of Don Michael Corleone after the end of World War II. As it chronicles the passing of the title Don from one generation to the next, The Godfather uses its Italian-American influences to create a story that feels so specifically real that it absorbs you into a family conflict you might not otherwise identify with, while also saying something about the cycle of crime and power in America. It really is like this movie is the godfather of movies. There is no talking about the godfather without talking about the incredibly realistic performances and characters across the board. Even though you don't spend a lot of time with every member of the Corleone family, they all feel like very specific members of a very specific family, which really leans into the feeling that this is a group of people that all live for and care for one another and would do anything to protect one another and make sure that everyone had what they needed to get by day to day. Why don't you tell that nice girl you love her? I love you with all of my heart. If I don't see you again soon, I'm gonna die. <laughs> and you do have to give a shout out to the iconic performances from both Marlon Brando and Al Pacino as Don's Vito and Michael Corleone over the course of the film. Marlon Brando's Don Vito is, at the same time, nonchalant but serious. He's not threatening, but he's still scary. He's pretty clearly a man who's held the power that he has for long enough to know what it means and is unafraid to use it as he sees fit. At the same time, he's well aware of the influence of his power and the gravity of his power and doesn't take lightly anything that he has to do or any decision that he has to make. Michael played by Al Pacino, starts the film off as a relative outsider to the family. A veteran from World War II and uninvolved with the family's crime, he is relatively innocent at the beginning of the film, but as he makes choices that harden him and deals with the fallout that further hardens him over the course of the film, you see him develop into... Don't be afraid, Carl. Come on, you think I make my sister a widow? Something pretty similar to his father. That parallel between Vito and Michael illustrates one of the best things about this film also. It's thematic content. It's no mistake that the character least involved with the crime family becomes the one most similar to its ruthless crime boss at the beginning by the end of the film. We even have a character in his second wife, or first girlfriend, Kay, who tells him early on, But you're not like him, Michael. I thought you weren't going to become a man like your father. That's what you told me. Which, at that point in time, you don't realize mirrors your desire for him as well. Ultimately, this makes it even more tragic at the end when Michael orders a killing of the other crime heads, cementing his place as the family's new Don. And if that's not enough layers of depth to the film, the moment when the other crime bosses get whacked is intercut with Michael's coronation as a literal godfather, showing him taking Vito's place both in the family and the family business simultaneously. By that point in the film, I didn't even mind that I was already two and a half hours into a three-hour film. I was totally absorbed into the characters, the conflict, and the drama between each of them. Michael, you lousy bastard. You killed my husband. That being said, before that moment, there were a couple points where I was like, yo, how long is this movie? While the film's deliberately slow pacing gives you time to connect with the rest of the family and its members, some of its plot just feels a little half-baked. Specifically, the whole subplot with Michael courting Apollonia feels dry and kind of forced, and really only thrown in there to... No! No, Apollonia! <laughs> I guess blow her up and make him upset about stuff? 
And while he's out of the country, there's the subplot with Carlo and Connie and the whole infidelity thing. It's like, I get it, but it just didn't seem necessary. And that super fake punch wasn't the only bit of violence that didn't sell either. While researching The Godfather, I read that Francis Ford Coppola had to hire a violence advisor uh, to help him add violence to the film and satisfy the studio, make it more exciting or something. It shows. It, it just shows. I'm not sure if he didn't care for the violent aspects or wasn't as skilled at putting together those parts of a production, but... I mean, I noticed that horribly fake punch the first time I saw it. Took me out of it a little bit. At the end of the day though, The Godfather is an epic story that gets better the longer I sit on it. The film tells both a great story that feels specific and real and engaging, while also using that story to say something about the cycle of crime and power and family relationships in America. Overall, it's getting an 18 out of 20 for me. Awesome, thanks for watching, guys. Have you seen The Godfather? Do you think it's one of the best movies of all time? Is it just way too slow for you? I, I mean, I understand. Let me know in a comment down below. Uh, I've got these reviews coming out every week now, so if you want to keep up with them, if you like what you're seeing, just subscribe down below. Thanks for watching. I'm going to do something different. So, you know, do stuff, make stuff, and peace out. Bye.